Today we will learn about explant, the starting material for tissue culture. What are the types of explant, how to choose right explant and what are the different methods to surface sterilize them. If you have watched my introductory video on plant tissue culture, you must be aware that obtaining appropriate explant is the first step to begin tissue culture. And based upon intended application, it is very very important to select the right explant. In brief, explant is the starting or the source material or the cells obtained from the plant and used for various tissue culture applications that I have mentioned in my previous video on 11 unique and wonderful applications of plant tissue culture. You may check out the video linked in the description below. In the first part of today's video, I will talk about explant and its type and in the second part, we will cover explant sterilization. Nodal segment, root and shoot apical meristems, cotyledons, embryo, leaf, petiole, anther, ovary, stem, etc. are some of the most commonly used explants. Now let's see which type of explant is suitable for a particular tissue culture application. For embryo culture and rescue, immature or mature embryos can be used. Mature embryos are essentially obtained from ripe seeds, immature embryos are obtained from unripe or hybrid seeds that fail to germinate. For cell culture or suspension culture, leaves and roots from seedlings or in vitro grown plants are generally used as initial explants. For genetic transformations, nodal meristems or leaf are some of the generally used source material. Sometimes callus, which is de-differentiated plant cells, are induced using a combination of auxin and cytokinin before proceeding for transformation. If the aim is seed culture, you use seeds as a source material to aseptically grow to obtain plantlets or mature plants. This is helpful for plants with poor seed germination and viability. Organ culture. Plant organs like shoot, root, leaf and anthers are used as an explant. Anther comprises of haploid genome and are suitable explant for development of haploid plants and double haploid plants that assist in molecular breeding. Meristem culture, shoot apical meristem and root apical meristem which comprises of undifferentiated fast dividing cells serves as excellent source if the purpose is micropropagation and developing virus free plants. Cell without a cell wall is known as protoplast. Tissues like leaf are harvested and treated with cell wall degrading enzymes to obtain protoplast. Protoplast serves as useful explant for protoplast fusion and development of somatic hybrids. Some other things that need to be kept in mind while collecting the explant. Explant should be fresh and young tissue and not too old. This affects the regeneration efficiency of the explant. Explant should be disease free. Nodal explant and meristem tissue should be collected in proper season when there is low environmental stress and when tissue growth is vigorous. The smaller explant is harder to culture. The larger explant probably contain more nutrient reserve and plant growth regulator to sustain the culture. Hence the size should be optimal. Genetic constitution or the type of variety is one of the major factors that governs the tissue culture efficiency and protocols might need modification according to this. Coming on to the second part of the video that is the surface sterilization of explant and methods. As we know that different types of microbes, pests, insect attacks or consider plants as their living place. So for in vitro propagation of plants, first and foremost step is removal of dust and microbes from the surface of the explant that otherwise may lead to contamination and tissue culture failure. A general surface sterilization involves washing the explant through running tap water for several minutes to remove the dust and other life forms. If required, few drops of twin 20 detergent may also be added. Next, the explant is dipped in disinfectant solution like 70% ethanol, HgCl2, sodium hypochlorite for a few seconds up to several minutes, depending upon the concentration of the explant and the explant type. This step and all the subsequent steps are performed in the laminar flow hood. Next, the explant is thoroughly washed with sterile water at least three times to remove the disinfectant completely. During each step, the explant is shaken or stirred properly for effective treatment. Here is a table that is showing the different kind of disinfectants and their concentrations that are generally used and also you can see some of the rarely used and most commonly used surface sterilization agents or the disinfectant solutions. 
but one needs to take proper precaution during sterilization. Sterilization is a critical step to avoid unwanted microbial growth. Depending upon the type of explant, type of disinfectant, its concentration and duration of exposure needs to be standardized. If using higher concentration of disinfectant, then duration of exposure is kept minimal. On the other hand, the exposure is extended if lower concentration of disinfectant is used. Stronger treatment may severely damage the explant or kill it. Poor sterilization may lead to contamination during the tissue culture. Care should be taken while handling as some of the disinfectants are extremely hazardous. I hope with this you have got some idea about different type of explants based on the intended applications and surface sterilization methods of the explant. In my next video, I will be explaining how to set up a plant tissue culture laboratory and basic requirements for plant tissue culture. For any suggestion or request, do comment or email me at explorebio at yahoo.com. Check out my playlist on topics like research and publishing, genomics, markers, techniques, diseases and vaccines. Thanks and see you in my next video.